Hello, my name is Dr. Derek O'Donnell, and I wanted to demonstrate how to do a refraction in some of these underserved areas that we're able to dispense um, some donated lenses and frames uh, to help this population. Okay, the first thing that we're going to show you to do is to have them read the eye chart. So the first thing they can do is just read it with both eyes together and go as far down as they can. You all should have an eye chart. It would be placed somewhere uh, from 10 to 20 feet away from the, from the patient and they can just read down. If they're able to read 20, 40 or better, they will not need a pair of glasses for the distance. If they're unable to do that with the two eyes together, have them cover one eye, read as far down as they can, and then cover the other eye and read as far down as they can with each of those eyes. If you want to record that somewhere, that's nice to give you a starting point to see what type of glasses would help them best. But anyone that is 20, 40 or better will not need a pair of glasses for the distance. You can do the same thing then for close. This is a here is an eye chart for the close vision and they can read down here there will be numbers on the side that show how far down they have read and to uh, see what their visual acuity is. 20, 40 or better up close is going to be good enough that they're probably not going to need a pair of glasses then. And if anybody's 20, 40 distance and 20, 40 close if you have sunglasses to give them for eye protection or they do not need any glasses at all. Okay, now I'm going to further demonstrate how to do a manual lens rack refraction. This is considered a lens rack. There are different lens powers within these racks and they show the number right below the lens to tell you what the power is. It doesn't really matter how they find the power or what those numbers are. You can just consider it um, units of measure. They're actually considered diopters. But the, the farther the power is from zero or the larger the number, the, the greater the lens power is uh, for that patient. So what I usually recommend is you can start with their, the eye that they see worse or always just do their right eye if they did not, were not able to read 2040 on the eye chart. You can have them cover their opposite eye. So Terry, if you could demonstrate and cover your left eye. What I do is the, the orange or red handles are, are minus powers. The black handles are plus powers. And to start off with, I usually recommend just taking, there's a, a one on each of these, and to show the difference between a minus one, we'll call this lens number one, okay, and then show them the plus one, which is lens number two. And there's an eye chart they're looking out uh, around that 10 to 20 feet distance away, and you say, put the lens right in front of their eye so that their pupil, the black area, is right in the center of the lens power that you want to show them. So you say, just to stand, it's best to use both hands, so better with lens number one or lens number two. Number two, okay. So Terry likes number two better, so that tells us that he likes the minus power or the orange or red power better. So in that case, whenever you look into this lens rack, you can eliminate using any of the black lens racks at this stage of it and all we need is to use the orange or red ones. Okay, now that we've discovered that we're going to work with the, le the uh, minus lens racks or the red lens racks, we want to go in one diopter uh, uh, jumps or a one unit jump. So we're going to start from a one and increase to a two and keep showing those increased measures to see which one the patient likes better. So we'll do the same thing, putting the rack right in front of his pupil. Do we like lens number one better, or do we like lens number two better? Number one. Number one's better? Yes. Okay, so he chose number one, so we have an idea of where we need to be, okay, with that. And whenever they choose that power, 
it's sometimes nice to have them read the eye chart to make sure that the vision is improving. If it's um, not improving or there's a language barrier, uh, we can continue going just to try to get them the best prescription possible. But the ideal thing is we don't want the glasses to be too strong for the patient. So they chose lens number one, and that was actually a higher power. So we have a, a two, a lens power two, and this is a lens power three. So you can use the same same numbers. We can say, do you like number, number one. one better? Number one. Or number two. And he chose number one again for this power. So that's his top point. He likes the minus two power. The minus three was too strong. So we want to refine those numbers a little bit more in half unit steps. So we're going to compare, in this case, a minus two to a minus 150. So we'll show here, it's right on these lenses here. We'll call this lens number one and lens number two. Number two. Okay, so he likes the minus 150 best, which is the least power that he could have chosen. We t he did not like the minus one. He thought the number two was the best. Number two was a little too strong, we went down to the 150. So that's his spherical equivalent power for his right eye. Then you go on and demonstrate the same thing for the left eye. And based on those numbers, you can go in and, and look at the, um, the different frames that you have available that are set up and find which power would meet best for that patient. Have them try them on that fit their face the best and give them the best vision. And you can either have them read the eye chart with the, the lens rack in front to see what their potential vision is with that. Or the best thing may be is whenever they put the glasses on that you have selected for them to make sure that it has improved their vision, it's not causing extra strain for them. If it is improving their vision and they like it, you can go ahead and, and let them go with that frame. If it does not and they feel like it's making them feel sick, or you can go back and redo the um, lens rack refraction, uh, the manual refraction, and see if you come up with a different number. If not, that is going to be the, the best pair of glasses for them and tell them to give a little bit of time to try to adjust to it. So we've demonstrated the distance uh, lens rack refraction and how to find the best uh, pair of frames and lenses available for the patient. The best thing for the, the close is Terry's actually presented you with a chart of age norms and that can give you the, the best route to go. There's different pair of reading glasses or over-the-counter reading glasses you can try for the patients. But I would go off of those age norms as far as the power to see what's going to be the best reading prescription for that patient. And then just have them try that frame on and see if that uh, lens power helps them to read further down on, on the eye chart that you would have uh, for the reading acuity. But I think that's really the best way, whether you do with both eyes or, or each eye separately, uh, it's going to vary for each patient, but they can try those different ones on uh, based on the age norm chart that you have presented there for them. Okay? Good luck and thank you for all your service.